is that? Is that a Gina Tombstone Popper? Whoa. Hey, guys. <laughs> Going. Welcome to Hollywood Haunters Channel. <laughs> Hi. Where once a year is Halloween. Now. Yeah, the, <laughs> yeah. Ever since we had a child, a lot of the prop making the has gone. The struggle is down. real, you guys. The struggle is real. But we're still thinking about it, and we're thinking about you guys. Yeah. So today, with our little one running around and us keeping one eye on him and one eye yes. on you guys for a project that we have been thinking about and thinking about and yeah. thinking about. Gina's been in, like at night sleeping going, <laughs> must make Halloween prop. Pretty much, pretty much. <laughs> uh, so today, <laughs> we are going to make... Oh, our kid's over there playing with fiberglass. <laughs> Harrison. <laughs> Beep. Okay, part two. Hey guys! No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> oh gosh, no. Oh gosh. This is exactly what we've been talking about. It's like we need two Chris's and two Gina's now. But we're figuring it out. We're in the process of figuring it out, but things are not like they once were. He is getting older and he's starting to uh he's starting to grab tools and he's you know, I think he's gonna help maybe. Hopefully. Bye! Bye! <laughs> Hi! He, he want, he's ready for the end of the video already. <laughs> Bye! Can you say hi? It's very bright right there. He needs some sunglasses. Yeah, he needs some sunglasses. Too. Hey, are we going to make some tombstones today? Are we going to make tombstones? We they don't even know what we're going to do yet. <laughs> anyway, you guys, so what we're going to do today is we have had an idea for many, many years and we have <laughs> not had the chance to do it. Yes. So today we're going to attempt to do something that we've been thinking about, dreaming about, wanting four, to show you guys eight, for a long three. time. It's basically, yeah. Basically, basically taking dollar store tombstones, dollar store tombstones, and seeing how cool and how realistic we can make it. Yeah. Or turn them into something realistic. Yeah. And when Gina says she has been thinking about this for years, we actually have some dollar store tombstones that we've been storing for years yeah. just to do this video. <laughs> So it took us a couple years before we had a child to do something. Now it takes us five years, so it's a miracle this is even being made right now. Yeah, so this is just the intro, so let's see how far we go. Yeah. Hey, that's kind of heavy. That's a solid plaster skull you're playing with there, pal. You need some help? All right, so what kind of creepy ideas do you have there, Gina? All right, let me just show you a little bit of what we've got to work with. I've got three of these tombstones. Now these ones I actually bought at Party City and I liked them because I already like the texture they have and they sit at an angle. Ooh. So that's a little bit different, so we're gonna see what we can do with that. Sure. We've got some regular yeah. white foot feet Yep, foam. some scrap foam. We've got some wood. Yep. Here's a tombstone that I already made out of this foam. We'll do a little something like that. Wow! Got some Spanish moss. Spanish moss. Picked up this lovely vase. Cool. That's gonna be neat. Yeah. Then we're gonna do some magic with some solar light stuff. Okay. I if you can guess what we're gonna do with that. Light some stuff. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> this might actually work pretty good. Oh. Oh. I'm going to die. These skulls, though, however, we're not from the dollar store. These are the ones that we made, and we've got a ton of them. They thing. use, they, they work awesome as but paperweights. Paper <laughs> they work great for creepy tombstone weights. Then, we've got all our dollar store tombstones. Then, some PVC and some rebar. Nice. Are you ready? I'm ready. All right. Let's do it. You got your load from the big box store? Are we ready to go build some props? Yeah, that's a lot of people's problems, buddy. How to strap it down. You could just hang it out the window. You just gonna walk? Oh, okay, we just step on it. Maybe he'll flatten it down a little bit more. <laughs> It'll make you fit in the truck a little better. Good job, buddy. Whoa! Whoa! <laughs> Woo! <laughs> oh, now you're gonna go? You're getting in the car backwards. 
So one of the ideas that Gina had was to take three of a kind and basically stack them all up, glue them together so that it creates a nice thick piece. Then we would also reinforce uh, the inside with either her light poles or some PVC so that she could slide it onto a piece of rebar. These actually come with a, a, a really sturdy little metal thing here that you can stick into the yard. But what ends up happening, Gina? They go, <laughs> where'd they go? <laughs> Pretty much. And then your neighbor has a new cemetery. You do frisbee. So if we're gonna double these things up, the first thing we wanna check is to make sure that they're pretty level. Real easy way is take a straight edge of some sorts. And I can see right now that my skull is the highest point on this thing. And basically we just wanna take this thing down a little bit. No. You can use this, no. scratch it up. It doesn't have to be perfect. But what you wanna do is get that to where it's pretty much straight across. So I may have to remove some of those diamond eyes. There. Ooh, that's pretty good. Whoa. Harrison, did you just pick a jalapeno from the yard to eat it? <laughs> He's gonna need some water. Oh my gosh. You're so your father's child. Sorry, Mr. Skull, but you ain't cool. Harrison, you want some rich stuff? You wanna try? Whoa, thanks buddy. You can also go in here, like I said, with sandpaper. Sandpaper is just gonna take a little bit longer. Wire brush works really good too. Now, see how these bad boys go together. Ooh, ah. Because we like the decorative decal that goes around the tombstone, and then we like this decal right here, we're just gonna shave off the skull right there, and then we're gonna see what that leaves us behind for the front of the tombstone. Yep. So I'm going to carefully do this one, take it down as nice as possible. Very smooth. Cool. <laughs> Hot. So I went ahead and I did another one just because this one looked a little cleaner than this one. One good tip is to pick out the best one and then do your custom work on it. Also too, they have these little circles. I didn't really want my tombstone polka dotted. So I <laughs> sanded out those little dots right there. I think that looks pretty good. I wish those scrolls were up higher. I guess I could cut this out and re-glue it up here, but. If you want to get really crazy. That's if you want to get really crazy. We just want to get a kind of crazy. So the next thing is, before I glue these all together, I'm gonna cut a couple pieces of this half inch PVC and we're gonna notch it out right here. I'm just kind of marking. with a skewer from the dollar store. <laughs> yes. Watch the styrofoam beads go flying. Now you could always use a sawzall if you don't have one of these hand saws. Or a jigsaw. Or a jigsaw. Or a steak knife. You can always use a power tool if you don't have a hand tool. <laughs> I'm sure you can get a steak knife from the dollar store. <laughs> yes, you can get a steak knife from the dollar store. <laughs> you could pick at Gina it. Gina didn't get my joke. I always get your jokes, honey. I just don't always laugh at them. Oh! <laughs> okay, so now that we got the pieces cut, uh, this is gonna be the back piece, then you have the PVC pipe section, and then you have our front section that's gonna go like this. So you can glue this together lots of ways if you guys have liquid nails or different kinds of uh, adhesives and stuff that don't melt foam, that'll work too. Uh, we like to use great stuff. The stuff has always been the best for us. It comes in a uh, gun form like this. If you're gonna use it a lot, this is worth having because you can reuse it. If you wanna save some money and buy the um, disposable kind, that stuff yeah. works too, but it's usually good for only one or two times because the straw gets all nasty. And make sure you use gloves. Yes, make sure you, unless you're me. Yeah. Whatever, you say <laughs> that. <laughs> Don't touch the, it, the Harrison. The thing that's nice about this gun is you have so much control like frosting a haunted Halloween cake. Ooh. <laughs> Get off there. Get off there. Wow. This is way more than I need. I'm gonna stick this guy on here. Just like so. Don't worry too much about placement. I'm gonna go ahead and put a couple more blobs right in here. Yeah. 
Okay. Okay. <laughs> now, same thing. Put this piece on. Now you can take your dollar store skewers and just put them at an ang different angles. Cool, so now we have our little Halloween tombstone sandwich. We got our skewers holding it in place. We'll just set this thing aside and we'll come back and then we'll clean it all up. <laughs> I have some scrap plywood that I was gonna try to make some kind of a base, a little bit bigger base for this thing. Uh, again, I'm gonna be using power tools for this, but if a guy didn't have that, you could go ahead and cut this all by hand, drill holes if you have a drill or hammer some finish nails into this thing. So because I also have this scrap foam left over from another project, I'm going to make another base out of foam and I will also use a router and give it a little decorative edge. Cool, so I got this piece all routed and done and then I've got the bottom piece cut. I think I'm going to give this to Gina so that she can bust it up or round the edges over a little bit. Gina wanted to point out that if you don't have any sandpaper or ways to grind these little uh, designs down, that you can just get some little pieces of scrap, whatever, and stick them in there so that it sets flush, like, and then we can just sit there and fill this in with great stuff and we'll come back and trim we it. have to trim it. Yeah. But then if we had some way <laughs> you, to trim it. You so. could take it. Well, I mean, okay. So, you can always <laughs> eat it. <laughs> <laughs> you could just take a knife and do it. But if you yeah. didn't want to sit there with the time to pick all this stuff off. I hate to lose some of this realistic moss right here. <laughs> Gotta shake this stuff up. Stuff actually is really cool for using the glue because it dries so fast. It works on wood, metal, fingers. Let's just stab it. Ow! Ow! If you go at different angles, it helps kind of keep these things from... Somewhere there's a tombstone that's got a backache now. <laughs> <laughs> Glue this on. Eyeball it there. You can always patch those holes up with a little bit of drywall mud or paint or something. Beautiful. Now, let's see if we can make this work. Oh, you're gonna do it already, huh? Heck yeah! You're going for it! Why wait? What might help this thing, too, is to actually stick at least one down the middle. Maybe two or three. And then that way it has a little bit of a... something something to support it. Does that look like that's about in the middle? Yeah, not too bad. This makes me want to make a cake. <laughs> With lots of frosting. This stuff's going to swell up pretty good. Mmm. Mmm. Awesome. Alright, so the only other thing I'm going to do just for the heck of it is I am going to also stick a skewer maybe through it into the base because you don't want this moving around. And like I said, in a few minutes it'll be good to touch. We can pull these out later. Time to trim the frosting down. <laughs> All right, so it's been a few minutes. Now we're gonna cut a little bit of this off. We're just gonna go through with our same little hand saw here. Hey, this one has a little bump here, right here. Want me to take it off? Yeah. It has a little dollar store imperfection. <laughs> what are the chances? So I'm just getting the worst of it. And then Gina can go back through and do fine <laughs> sanding. Dude, we can go ahead and take these skewers out. Some of them get a little stuck because of the great stuff. But the other thing that we need to do is we need to drill our two holes for the PVC. And you could dig this out with a screwdriver. I happen to have a screw gun with a paddle bit or a spade bit. So I'm just gonna choose my locations. Whoa! Hey now! Hey! 
<laughs> so we need to re-glue this. <laughs> Maybe that's why it says let it cure for an hour. <laughs> well, you know what? We I didn't really clean the dirt off this foam. Oh, nice. From sitting. Nice. So that could have something to do with it. Mm -hmm. So note to self, clean foam, lots of glue. Yeah, and I probably should let it dry a little longer, like you said. Dry but a little it's... longer. Jeez, Gina. It's all your fault. We're just so excited. We want to get these tombstones done and out. Yes. Well, I also was pushing really hard with this, too. Mm. Probably don't need to use so much force. Nice and easy. Nice and easy. As I go through the other side. <laughs> you guys want to know why we're really hurrying. It's because a baby can only take a nap for so long. <laughs> yeah, no kidding. <laughs> you guys. I can already tell. It looks so much better. Yeah, it's getting fancier. Woohoo! Fancier and fancier. Oh man, that comes off super this, easy. Yeah, some of these tombstones are like really lightweight foam. Yeah, this is like really easy. Whoa, this, it's snowing. Some of them are more dense and some of them are lightweight. <laughs> and this one is definitely <laughs> like, it feels like the same kind of foam that a lot of those disposable coolers are made out of. It's like the dentist office. You're like, suck out my saliva, please. I can't swallow. Now you can buy short pieces of PVC or cut them down at the hardware store, yeah. correct? Yeah, they should have some in the big box stores already cut down. Like, usually they're like in a little cubby or a bin on the aisle. And if not, I know that some, some of them actually will cut them for you. They make these really cool snips that you can actually just snip them, so it's whatever a person's comfortable with. Also, they have short pieces of rebar too, right? Yes. Bye, trick or treat. <laughs> One thing to note too is that I always try to use the window and door, this blue can. The great stuff comes in different types. You've got like the black can and the red can. The blue can doesn't uh, swell up as much kind of works better for gluing the foam together. That other stuff that the, the red one or the black one kind of it's so it gets so big that it, it expands and it'll actually push the foam a, a, apart so this window and door one is a lot uh, easier to kind of control. So on this one because we built this wood base here we're gonna do bolts instead of PVC pipe and the idea is I'm gonna glue these in have them fixed in here, and then we'll drill holes in here, and then that way the foam portion of this can be removable when it comes time for storage and stuff. The bolts will slide in through, and then we'll just take some, some nuts and, and attach it that way. How much do you think those bolts are? A couple um, bucks? 60 cents, <laughs> something like that. Yeah. You know, I don't. I think these are like three inches or two and a half, uh, three eighth size. And you can make that box out of pallet wood too. Yeah, I mean that's literally the scrap wood that we did have laying around. You could also fix uh, PVC. You could do the same thing as the other ones and just have maybe some bolts or something fixed or PVC slide in some holes there. You, I could have left the PVC longer mm -hmm. and drilled the holes and you just set it in yep. place too. What you could also do is you could fix a piece of foam in here and then you could just slide the Stick it. piece of PVC into the foam. You may not want to move it after that, but that would work too. Yeah, the only thing I want to make sure on this though, you got to be careful of is we just want to make sure our uh, bolts are somewhat straight so we're not fighting it later. As it cures a little bit, you'll be able to straighten them. Exactly. There you go. You can pull the screws out though. I don't want to put too much pressure on those screws yet. But what we can do is get an idea of the way we want to drill our holes. Give ourselves a mark. What's nice about this little base is I left the back open so that you could put some rocks or a brick or sand or anything that has weight to it. 
mm -hmm. in this space. Yeah, you could also put a little mini fog machine in there, a strobe Ooh. light, some lighting in there. That's good. Put some fancy. sound. Yes, you can. I guess you could do a lot with it. It's kind of nice too because you can screw, get a couple screws in there, you know, attach things to it. You could also hide the good trick or treat candy in there. And then. <laughs> <laughs> you could do a booby trap. <laughs> When you're roaming through your cemetery, you could just stop in for a snack. I'm not going to get it too tight yet because, again, I'm worried about putting too much pressure on these bolts. I'm not so sure that they're going to stay in very well right now. But. Just test fit it. Just I'll test, just test fit, it. fit and everything. So I've got this tombstone. We're going to go ahead and put this thick piece of foam behind it. All I'm going to do first is. Trace it out. It's crazy how perfect that piece was. I know. And this piece of foam's been sitting around for a few years. <laughs> Alright, so now that we got that, I'm going to hand this off to Chris. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to keep this stone texture, so I'm just going to pick at the letters. Once I started to pick away at the RIP, it became all white foam. And the thing is, is I didn't want it raised anymore in certain areas to say RIP but I couldn't tell where it was still high and low so I went over and I painted it with black so now I'm going to chip it away and try to mimic more of the rock underneath but that's a little tip to help you if you you can't really see and can't really tell because it still says RIP <laughs> so we're getting a little bit better we're almost done I can still kind of see the ring right there from the R and the P looks really good right there. I may shave that down a little bit in the eye, but for the most part, I think I'm just gonna chip away just a little bit more and then I'll be pretty happy with this stone. So it's been a few minutes, now I can work on these again, and what I'm going to do now is just go through and try to get the edges to match up with the existing edges. I'll go through and do a little fine sand, smooth it out a little bit, but before I do it that, I might as well drill my holes for my PVC pipe here. <laughs> so I'll have to cut those down a little bit. <laughs> or we can have some that are longer and just... If you've got soft ground... I know, we can do this into the ground. Oh yeah, that would really work. <laughs> and, then, and then we can stab this into there. <laughs> that will work. See if I can do it without getting any on my fingers. Ooh. Ah. All right, so with this larger tombstone we have, another idea we can do is I'm gonna cut it and break it up into three different sections. And what I'm gonna do with this one is I'm gonna lay it flat on the ground and I'm gonna put some dirt around it with some plants growing out of it like it was a tombstone that's been fallen over and long forgotten in the earth for a while. Gina and I went to a cemetery a couple years ago and there was a, actually a bunch of them that were like this all busted up on the ground and stuff. So cool. I think the guy that mows the lawn sometimes does it with the lawnmower. He, he starts four buying over tombstones. He's all, Poof. woo! He's like, hey, nobody's left flowers on this one for a while. It's safe to break. <laughs> I hope. <laughs> People pay lots of money for those. What's the one in Hollywood where you can watch a movie? Oh, the Hollywood Forever Cemetery. Thing. Yeah. Maybe over there they get broken ones from the drunk people drinking too much wine. They're like, this was a good movie. Where how do we get to the car? <laughs> oh, shoot. broke that tombstone. All right, so now we've got our pieces like this. I'm gonna sand and find out 
file down the edges a little bit. Try to make them look yeah. kind of like a busted up edge there. It's going to look. Yeah, make it a little more jaggedy, huh? Something like that. And I'll just put some earth in there and there's another idea. And you can do that with the smaller tombstones too. It's just maybe you could put two together to make them a little bit bigger. Yeah, and then when it's not Halloween, it could be a puzzle for our son. <laughs> <laughs> all right so now that gina got these all cut and broken looking they look really awesome uh, we were like uh oh this thing's even lighter than it was before so we decided you know what we should probably add some weight to it and we did have a piece of scrap quarter inch plywood luon and i just basically took the pieces traced them on here and now i'm going to take this jigsaw and i'm going to cut out these and then glue them to the backs of that and that should be fine for a little bit of weight all right so now that the plywood is dry and stuck onto the foam i went ahead and sanded all the edges so little gina and harrison wouldn't get splinters in their fingers <laughs> And now this is pretty much ready to go. It's been sanded. Now the next thing is to fill this up and make it one, you know, make it look like one with some mud or something. So we had a really cool idea when we were walking through the dollar store. We saw these solar lights and I thought, hey, if someone doesn't have rebar or PVC pipe, what if they got a couple of these solar lights and use the stake part? Right. So just like the PVC, I'm going to cut this middle section and install these and then I'll put them in a way to where if you wanted to just remove this spike, maybe you could pound that in the yard and then plug it in or do it this way, whatever's easier. We'll try and see how that works. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see if it works well or not. For $2. $2, it actually is probably cheaper in the long run to do something like this than the PVC. Plus then, also somewhere in your cemetery or graveyard, maybe we can utilize the solar lights somehow. Beautiful. Another tombstone somewhere back is hurting. <laughs> ah, ooh, ooh, ah. <laughs> it's nice because that PVC actually adds some weight to these things. So the next thing to do is to, to take a sander and kind of level this all off. And again, if a person wasn't too happy with that, they could always go back here with some great stuff little thin layer and then let that dry and then sand that smooth too. Another thing you could do if you want it to be easier to follow the pattern on the front you could just take it and do a line through here and just you know through each in the middle of each one yeah. and then like you could you just a give dremel? it a decal. Well like if you had a dremel, dremel or, or pick or it a, out. Yeah definitely. That and then you wouldn't too. have to shave anything off. Another idea we had is that if you go to the dollar store and you find some bric-a-brac or a knick-knack or a picture frame or something and you get a basic shape that you can put over yeah. your tombstone and yeah. apply that to it to give it pop-out detail. Yeah, if we would have thought about that when we were there, we would have grabbed something. Since we didn't have some, I just cut an oval with a piece of scrap plywood, great stuffed it on, put a little skull weight on there until it dried. But now that adds a little extra detail. Yep. You can paint it. Yeah. Put it in your graveyard. <laughs> Another cool thing about adding like concrete or anything to hard coat this and paint and stuff is it does add weight. Yeah. But another idea for adding some weight, take our little paddle bit, drill down. Now you can dump a little bit of rocks in there. Pack them in there. Then you fill that hole up. Mm, nice. Does it feel a lot heavier? Definitely adds a little bit. So what's cool is you could just do a few of those if you're really worried about it. Now on this one, you can see where Gina cut with the saw. You can kind of see that it looks like bead foam next to a painted piece of foam and it's a lot smoother. So I'm just going to go through with this sanding block. You can use any kind of sanding paper, probably the finer, better as far as getting smooth. And I'm just going to try to kind of make it as nice as I can. See how that kind of smooths it up a little bit? Makes it look a little nicer. It's now a that's lot better. A, it's a very sharp edge, so now you can just kind of round it over. Lightly round it over. You could also you can distress these as much as yeah. you want. So chip away at them, make them all a lot yeah. older. Make it look a 
little It all depends on what look you're going for. Exactly. This thing's been sitting in storage for a while. <laughs> the sun kind of deteriorated it a little bit. Now, Woo! this actually would look okay, right, Gina? You're probably yeah. not going to notice this you're, at in the In the nighttime, you're not going to notice. Yeah, so if you just went ahead and painted it, tried to fill that in with paint, that probably would work too. Mm -hmm. But since we want to go a little extra step further, we're gonna fill these cracks in. You could use any kind of plaster filler, right? Sometimes uh, a, what a cool hard coating is, is you mix uh, drywall mud, paint, and some uh, painter's caulking, and you make a monster mud mixture. You could also use a driveway sealer. But what we're gonna do is I have already actually started. I had uh, some joint compound. This particular one has a low shrinkage. I have already applied it to the edges of this tombstone. I also smeared it on the back to try to get rid of some of that bead texture. Put it on some of the areas where Gina sanded the skull away. We've got a little 220 sandpaper. And the idea is once this dries, it's still a little bit wet, but basically what's nice about this is you can go through, kind of sand it smooth. I'm gonna let this dry a little bit longer, but it should be, should work pretty well as far as hiding those edges. I did this one, you can see, the first coat. What we're hoping is that once you paint this, it should seal that in pretty good. Again, if you mixed paint and you made like a mixture, it might bond a little bit. It's funny though, that, that joint compound actually says not to mix anything with it, otherwise it won't work as good. So we'll see, it's worth trying. So this is just a thin set mortar that we like to use sometimes on some of our foam sculptures. It's a, an inexpensive, basically way to hard coat with a cement type of a finish. Now, it also dries pretty fast. On this one, you'll see I've already smeared it on here. This is the first coat. The thicker that you build this up, the better it's gonna be. Check out the Ooh. consistency. This stuff is fun to work with too. Yeah, and you know, Gina, you've used a brush in the past mm -hmm. to yep. smear this stuff on. Sometimes I use my hand, like if there's a bunch to blop on. For this one though, we'll, we'll use a putty knife. You can just kinda And you can do thin layers at a time. I've got this kind of held at an angle so you can see, but. Like I said, this stuff actually dries pretty quickly, especially yeah, if it's it does. sunny out. It's cool too, because it fills any of the holes that are in the wood. What is it, the, the shish kebab stick holes? Fills that stuff up. If you want a super smooth stone, just take a wet sponge after it cures for a little bit. Oh, yeah. You'll be able to make it really smooth. On these little areas where I use the router, I just smear it with my fingers. We're not putting any epitaphs on here, but if you were gonna do one, and then you apply this mud, you just gotta be careful not to put too much in there, or wipe it out, that kind of thing. Now, in doing a place like this, I'm probably gonna apply a couple layers of it. This is if you want to get really crazy. Again, I think at nighttime, you would never notice this detail, but if some of you guys like to look at your decorations in the daytime. Definitely helps. Yeah, it definitely helps. So I'm still applying the uh, little thin set mortar on here, and as it starts to dry, it becomes a lot easier to work with. So I just wanted to show you guys real quick. I'm using a putty knife and um, going through with a wet sponge like Gina was talking about, or no, this is like a rag, and uh, just kind of taking some of the edges off and cleaning it up a little bit. Uh, as a rule of thumb, what I usually do is on the, any time I put the stuff on wood, I usually do as thin a coat as possible, and then on the foam, obviously it's thicker the better. Um, if your sculpture is a giant piece of foam like our pumpkins, a lot of times when the uh, temperatures change it'll expand and sometimes it'll crack, but I've never had a, a piece of this mud fall off, so it, it sticks on that foam pretty well. Another thing too is once you paint this thing, it'll also add a little shell, a little latex paint shell on there that holds it together as well. 
one thing too if you have a little dremel you could always add your names and stuff after you've hard coated on here too so while that coat of the mortar dries on those tombstones over there i'm gonna go over these other ones with this joint compound and i'll just go over them like i did on this one this one had some existing cracks that i wanted to get rid of because we have it already busted and i will note that uh, this joint compound is definitely easier for me to work with i can smear it on and it's easy to sand and all that kind of stuff but i still think i like the uh, overall outcome of what you get with the mortar mix. On a couple of these tombstones there were already some existing cracks and uh, we thought that there was a little too many cracks. <laughs> they were getting kind of carried away there. Yeah so we just kind of tried to make it look a little more realistic by filling up a couple of spots. Another spot too obviously is in these bust marks. Just kind of blobbed it in there and then I'll go through there with some sandpaper and make it look as busted as I can. So these tombstones have got the mud on them and they're almost done drying. Then these tombstones are just hanging out, waiting to get some paint on them. So I'm gonna do these ones first. I'm gonna mix up a light gray paint and let's work some movie magic on them. A lot of the store-bought tombstones come in such a dark color and the thing is is they're already so dark that when you have them in your yard at nighttime it's very dif difficult to see so that's why I like to put on a gray a light gray color because then you can add dark weathering to it and they can still see that there's tombstones in the yard see what a difference that makes I mean that's almost black compared to this light gray. And I'm doing it pretty thick because I want these. Now, do you to think last that. As long as they can. Do you think that you have to? Like, what's important about doing like a coat of paint? Because it already kind of looks concrete looking. Yeah, it does look concrete right there, but I think this is going to seal that mud yeah, from shipping and stuff. Definitely. Which you could totally leave them like that if you were just going to do a cemetery for a year or two. Yeah. I'm sure it would be fine. But this way then you kind of get a blank slate. Because sometimes if you do different um, muds at different times, it, it can look streaky or whatever. This is all going to be um, one consistent color. I like to go straight up and down at the end because... The if brush there strokes. are lines or brush strokes, they're all going the same direction. That already doesn't look like a dollar store tombstone. No, it looks amazing, right? Whoa, all right. Looks like we're all done here. Yes. What did that take like 10 gallons of paint? <laughs> well, I did put it on there pretty thick. So. <laughs> the next step is um, taking this darker gray color. Okay. And I'm just going to lightly, lightly dry brush over the light gray to give it a little dimension. But that is a lot of. The sun is so hot, too. It's yeah. like Gina's fighting the paint drying. Oh, there we go. We got to go in the shade. You're barely going to be touching it at all, but keep going the same direction, and you're just hitting the top of it. Dang, I don't even see a difference in the color. <laughs> well, Man, I mean, you must have to have a, a special painter eye. Come here, amigo. You can tell. Oh, yeah, I can tell. <laughs> all right. It was the angle I was standing uh -huh, at. sure. I was standing at the <laughs> non-seeing angle into the sun. <laughs> <laughs> the bright angle. That's pretty cool. Yeah. It's really nice when the tombstones have that texture to it. That kind of helps, it huh? Definitely helps. That's one benefit of leaving the styrofoam, kind of styrofoaming versus smoothing it out because it helps you. So I just did a little bit. I did a little bit heavier on some, a little bit lighter on others. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take some antique white cream color. I've got a little bit on a paintbrush and a little bit on a sponge. You can just chop up a work sponge too. You don't have to have a sea sponge, but I like this one because it has different texture to it. But I'm just gonna go back in there and just dab some white speckle dots in there. Let me make it real bright so you guys can see. Whoa. Whoa. <laughs> Whoa. Let me do that again. Okay, I'm gonna go heavy to show you because you can always cover it back up, but See the dots right there? 
oh, that yeah. I'm putting on. Well, you want to twist and keep turning this. And the thing is, is also, if you just do a lot of little dots and blend it, that seems to look the best. But yeah. you just want to go ahead and hit it, but keep spinning. And see, like, that is a little swish mark I just made. You yep. don't want that. So go back in there right away just before it dries. It. Yeah, because you don't want a, a little here, mark. Yeah. a little there. But remember, you can always go back over with some gray. And you're just basically putting some highlight marks into the stone. You can come with your brush. This is the part I like, is make it really dry, right? And you can just go like this as well. And you just go up in some spots. And that kind of takes away some of the, the harshness of the sponge, of the look, sponge or whatever. look, exactly. But it's so bright, I'm going to have to go take this into the shade yeah. so I can actually see what I'm doing with the light. <laughs> <laughs> we need our welding goggles on. <laughs> I see on here you just a little bit of that dark gray. Yeah, see on that one and then this one. It's okay. A heavier on that yep. one. It's a little bit heavier of the dark gray, but yeah, it's amazing how every little layer adds to it and the more colors the more detail you put on there the more realistic it's starting to look more and more creepy <laughs> as time goes on <laughs> the only thing not creepy about this is the blaring hot sun <laughs> i know it doesn't feel like october yet no not at all not or to us I right now fall? <laughs> well i better go it's awfully quiet i better go check on our sun <laughs> All right, so how are we doing? The wind is kidding. Like obviously that one's not weighed down enough. All right. <laughs> <laughs> we could totally leave them as is right now. It's got the light gray base. It's got a dark gray dry brushing on it. And then it's got some white stippling and uh, clouded over the top of them, which it looks, I mean, Compared to what these were, I think this looks so much better. I mean, even look at this detail already still. I mean, that looks so much better than yeah. when it said trick or treat, I think. More yeah, realistic can't even anyway. Tell. That so one now the trick or treat. And this one was the skull and crossbones. Yeah. Before uh. my paint dries in the sun, <laughs> I'm gonna add more detail. I'm just gonna keep going with it. And so now what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna splatter just some black this is just giving it more of like a granite stone it is pretty crazy how you, every single thing you do yep. just adds Add to more it and more and more and more. And I mean Gina's done this I've seen her do this where she'll have like white black gray tan. brown <laughs> tan cream make sure your brush is really dry if you're gonna splatter like that because if you don't you're gonna get runs kind of like that just adds a little bit of definition not tons but it definitely adds a little something I've got four different greens and I've got a brown right there what I'm gonna do is I've got these different sponges and a brush I'm gonna mix them up I'm gonna start putting some fake moss on my tombstone. So that's kind of bright. A little bit of brown too. Come back over that. There we go. That's a little bit better. You can do as much or as little as you want. You can make some sections really mossy. Other parts not so much. Look at the top right there. But that definitely adds detail to it. That's what it looks like with the green on it. Ooh. And I went heavy right here, right here, and a little bit up here and down here because now from the dollar store, we're gonna add our moss to it. Nice. Yeah. And then I'm gonna go back over it because it is all brown with some of the same paint color. And I wanna make it a little bit cartoony because it stands out so much better at nighttime. In the dark and stuff, yeah. Yeah, and when you film it, it looks really cool. Ooh, it looks so good already. Yeah, we're almost done. <laughs> we're almost done. Why did we do so many? Because <laughs> we always do so many. <laughs>
You got to have a few, right, to have a, the perfect looking tooth. Absolutely. It's a family graveyard. Exactly. <laughs> shake that glue. Shake it, shake it, shake it. <laughs> right, here we go. Now, how much of that should we put on? Just a little bit. I want them each to be different, but where it was heavy with yeah. the, uh, the paint, I'm going to... And the thing is, is I want to put this on as thin as I can because it just kind of wastes it. Yeah, a lot of that stuff. Sometimes in storage and stuff too, we rub them together and they come off a little bit. Yeah, so I just pat but that in there really good. Good thing it's a dollar. Yeah, I love it. Break it up a little bit. That's what you want. Now, on do you know what side that moss always technically grows yeah. on? Well... I was going to say the north side, but... I don't actually I don't know, know I, for sure you know, right offhand either. I honestly, I grew up in the desert, so when <laughs> I do, when I put moss on stuff, I always second guess myself. I grew up in Alaska, and I should know the answer to that, because all the trees and the ground and everything had moss, so if any of you guys know out there, I'm sure we'll get a couple comments about the that. The west side, the east side... The south side? <laughs> I think I covered them all. It's one of them. It's one of them. Okay, cool. So I put that in there. I would you think can it's go the as north heavy side. as you want. Yeah, that's what I was thinking yeah. too. That so could be you wrong. could do just a little bit if you want. Or you could put a little more spray. I'm going to put a little more spray on this one. I'm going to do the top. I like how the green paint still shows up underneath the moss and yeah. kind of adds an extra you know, yeah. texture element or whatever. It's cool, right? It is. It's really, really cool. Let me work on these and then see when they're all done. <laughs> all right. We're so close. We're so close. I've got Hunter Green spray paint and I've got Hunt Club Green. Now, you can have any color green you want. This is just more detail, more detail. What I'm going to do is I'm going to hit it a little bit with both to add some more detail. And it's just a misting because I don't want to spray paint my tombstone. Just hitting the moss. And then I've got more of that color from underneath. And what I'm going to do is just go back Ooh. a little bit. This brush has about had it. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, no more, no more. With that one, you did both sides. Yeah. That one, well, that was my, my original test. So oh, I got you. You like this or you like this? That's cool. You can kind of do pick. one side or the other. Maybe this year we'll do this one and the next <laughs> year we'll do that one. <laughs> the only other thing, if you really wanted to get crazy, is to get some watered down brown or black, mix a little red, mix a little green in there, and spray over it so you can have the runs. And um, I may do that on a couple of them, but I'm pretty happy with how all of these are turning out. I did age that one a little bit. I put some black in the corners and then I wiped it all with a rag. I'm not big on runs, but some people really like the look of that, so go for it if you want to. Cool. Let's they look awesome. Let's yeah. Yeah, let's set it up. had so much fun making these tombstones and transforming yes. them from one to another. <laughs> Aww, you're so sweet. Smelling the dead flowers. <laughs> we have a walking baby amongst the graves. 
Anyways, comment, like, subscribe. We hope yes. you guys have an awesome Halloween. If you guys do end up doing any of these tombstones, yeah, let tag us. us. Let us know. We're on Facebook, Instagram, Pinterest, all yeah. of the above. And which one was your favorite? Which style do you like? Which one would you do? What ideas did we not think of? Totally leave some comments. Give us a thumbs up if you like this video. And definitely subscribe. All right. We'll talk to you later. Bye. Bye. Bye.